Okay, I think before looking at the Garden of Love, it's worth considering uh, the Echo in Green. Um, as within it, Blake does imagine an idealised pastoral scene. Um, obviously, as a lifelong Londoner, it's probably it was imagined rather than seen, though. Um, but it does serve to contrast the poems that show, uh, or parts of uh, the Echo in Green, uh, serve to contrast the poems that show the polluted side of city life. Uh, and that's not just the physical pollution, perhaps but perhaps the emotional pollution too, uh, such as the treatment of children, especially in the poverty that pervaded city life. Now, the poem depicts a conventional village scene uh, and portrays a day in the life of the village, started at when sun arises down to uh, the darkening green in the third stanza. Um, and perhaps this metaphorically encapsulates the life cycle itself. Um, and some uh, critics have said that this suggests that uh, the pastoral uh, perfection uh, is or was enduring, uh, although we will look at this idea later. When we look at the first stanza, uh, we see that the sun rises, uh, metaphorically intimating youth uh, and a new beginning. And there is a semantic field of happiness. We have um, the merry bells, we have the cheerful sound, um, we, have the, we have the singing. And uh, I've, I've seen uh, some uh, study guides uh, talk about the uh, the jaunty iambic uh, lines and the rhyming couplets. Uh, but the, what they do do is they give a, a sense that everything is in order and that nature, uh, nature shown by the uh, the thrush, uh, the skylark, uh, the birds of the bush, uh, is in harmony with uh, with with humankind, with man. Uh, signified by the bells and the sports, so so everything is in, within harmony here. Um, on the echo in green, this this line that's repeated as al almost as a, a refrain in the first two stanzas does link to the title, uh, and I think it's important for us to understand what the green is. Um, green obviously links to fertility and life. Um, but it's also linked to the idea of uh, the village, the village green. Uh, that's common land, communal land uh, that can be used to graze in. Was often seen as a meeting place where people would uh, meet and celebrate. So that's land that is not owned by anybody, uh, where anyone can take their animals and allow it to gr uh, to graze. And many, and many villages, uh, lots of villages uh, still do have village greens. Um, but it's not so common these days. Um, villages would have had a green as a meeting place. Um, now, many of those village greens uh, have been lost uh, and they were lost during the agricultural revolution for a number of reasons. Uh, and we don't need to go into too much depth about what the agricultural revolution is. It's, it's kind of like loosely linked to the industrial revolution. And it was uh, an event uh, a change that was occurring over the 17th, 18th and 19th century. Um, so some suggest that perhaps what Blake is doing is he's showing uh, the pre-industrial happiness by referring to the green. And we're going to talk more about echoing at the end because uh, the, the, the term echoing is interesting. Uh, we could at this point suggest that it's, uh, the, the green is reverberating with the laughter and the play. So it's again, it, it, it kind of like gives that sense of uh, this enduring happiness. When we get to the second stanza, what we see is old John. Um, now, old John is not a literal person. Uh, contextually, the term old John was used as a, a conventional pastoral f uh, figure in 18th century poem. Uh, so he's not a person, but a metaphor for the older generation. Um, and there is a sense of ambiguity here. Uh, he laughs away care, uh, he laughs at our play. Uh, so perhaps, um, and again some people have suggested, uh, that we can assume that there's a sense of harmony here, and a sense of harmony uh, across uh, all generations. And I think this is an appropriate thing to say. Uh, we, we could suggest that our uh, experience shown by age is in harmony uh, with innocence here and that suggests perhaps goes back to the idea of the suggest uh, suggestion of the continuation uh, of the perfect pastoral scene it is lasting generations or should we say it's lasted generations because we can be critical 
and look at the language. Um, so old John with white hair does laugh away care, sitting under the old oak among the old folk, they laugh at our play. So whilst there is a kind of sense of uh, security, uh, uh, not a sense of security, there's a sense of community here, sorry. Um, what we notice is the preposition at, he's laughing at uh, the, the, uh, the young children playing. Um, and this could be a hint that old John is lamenting his kind of lost youth and innocence. He's laughing at what they are doing. Um, he sees it perhaps as... Uh, maybe you know uh, youthful infantile uh, immature and this is supported uh, by the repetition of such 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 were the joys when we were all girls and boys you know here he is lamenting his lost innocence and youth um, it, it I think it's sort of like slightly less ambiguous here you know he's looking back at a time when he was young uh, and he is showing maybe a kind of um, uh, reminiscing there is this kind of uh, sense of regret as he's aging um, perhaps this lament leads us then to the, this final stanza um, the end of the day and the growing darkness so things here are coming towards an end and the simile uh, like birds in their nest might suggest a sense of safety and security however now the green is not echoing it is darkening Perhaps if we symbolically view the day as a metaphor of life, you know, that whole idea that morning is birth and growth and evening is old age and moving towards death, the darkening perhaps suggests the idea that age is a threat to safety and security. Uh, maybe the previous echo uh, is an echo of something that is now lost. Possibly what that could be is contextually the removal of freedom to the loss of the green land during the agricultural revolution. Um, as I mentioned um, at the beginning, I mentioned the poet seems at the start to lend itself to the fact that the pastoral perfection is enduring. But the end of the poem laments that progress is taking away the pastoral scene. Therefore, progress is not necessarily positive for certain aspects of life. Uh, we might also consider contextually the political zeitgeist. The zeitgeist just means the spirit of the age. Uh, some critics have suggested that uh, as a poem was written at the beginning of the French Revolution, um, Blake could be sharing uh, the sense of optimism for change, but it also uh, echoes the fear of change. I think that's a bit vague to stand alone as an argument, uh, but it could be a supporting statement. So, uh, kind of like sum, to su sum up, again, perhaps Blake represents innocence as the idealised state as seen at the beginning of the poem. Uh, but the question we've got to ask is, will this naturally be lost uh, through experience?